Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths. I work in IBM Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this series of movies, we're looking at the Hardware Management Console 8. A bit of a crash course, as quick as I can go through the basics. This is part one. We'll have a quick look at what is the HMC and what can it do. Then we'll have a quick look at the user interface. In later parts, we'll look at the details of machines, details of virtual machines, and details about the monitoring and support. So when you get a HMC, what do you actually get? Well, you get some software in the hardware. On the hardware side, you'll get a 1U uh, Intel server. You'll install the DVD into the front, and using your local screen and keyboard, then you'll do the install, and you'll put it onto the network. Um, after that, you can actually remotely access all the HMC functions, either via a browser for some graphical user interface, or you can SSH there to get the command line interface. On the software side, um, the current version is 8.40, December 2015, and that controls our Power 6, 7, and 8 servers. If you have older Power 5 machines, for example, then you'll have to be using HMC version 7 something. We can access this HMC local screen and keyboard. Um, the hardware maintenance guys, if they're into the computer room and they want to replace parts, they go through a procedure on the HMC, so that should be fairly near the computer. And um, But everybody else will be back at their desk or, or at home or wherever remotely accessing all the same things. So we've got a command line interface. Again, it's running as an appliance. You're not allowed to log in as root and make grass, ghastly changes to this, this thing. There's a command line interface with specific commands that you have access to. Everything else will be banned. You can run the scripts remotely and use remote commands to actually get the information from the HMC or give it instructions of things you want done. There's a graphical user interface called Enhance Plus. I've got other movies out there that go through uh, that. It does look nice, a little bit slower. In this set of movies, we'll be looking at the classic uh, graphical user user interface. The old guys have been using this for many years now and a little bit quicker so some of the new guys will be using this as well. If you look around the back of any of our regular Power 8 boxes from IBM you'll find two ports there. They'll be labelled HMC1 and HMC2. You're normally connected to two machines to allow some redundancy. If you're updating one you can still got the second HMC that you can use to control all your machines and virtual machines. These are connected to the service processor which does lots of reliability, availability and serviceability tasks on the computer. It also does the initial, when you boot it up, check of the firmware and the adapters and buses and the memory and actually starts the main CPUs when you ask the machine to power up. These Ethernet ports aren't for regular um, communication from the applications and operating systems that you're going to run in your virtual machines. So how do we network this all together? Well we have you down in here hopefully connected to some sort of system admin network typically in a larger computer room. The HMCs are sitting on that network so you've got access to the command line and to the graphical user interface we'll look at in a second. At the back of the HMC, it's running another network using DHCP, and these are the ones that are connected to the service processor. Of course, there's two service processor Ethernet connections. The other one goes to another network run by another HMC. These HMCs will communicate with each other. In fact, if you make an operation on one, create a virtual machine, for example, within a couple of seconds, the other HMC will know all about it. This gives you a lot of redundancy in your HMC and allows you to upgrade them whenever you like. These networks are completely different to other networks that will be coming into the machines over which your users and your database traffic or whatever it is you're doing, your web services, coming in for their high-speed uh, network access to get their job done. So these are all just for the HMC. So what does the HMC do, or what can we do with it? Well, we can control our servers, uh, power them on and off. We can update their system firmware. We can find out their configuration and all the details of what they've got inside them. And then the HMC monitors both the software and hardware for issues. So it's a central point of managing everything that's going on with our computers. It allows us to do virtualization. We create a virtual machine that's called a virtual I.O. server and that provides the virtual disks, networks and DVDs. It actually owns the physical resources but then can pass out access to those virtually to our virtual machines. It acts this uh, reliability, availability and serviceability central point of monitoring, monitoring and reporting these things. If you set it up, and we do recommend you do this, you then it will um, send information back to IBM about uh, components that have failed and the hardware maintenance guys can then phone you up and say, we've seen that this, this component has failed, we have one um, on the way to you, can you give us access to your computer room so we can repair this 
hopefully you have redundant hardware so that we can repair it on the fly and not uh, take your services down. On the virtual machine side, then we used to call these uh, logical partitions, but we can create our virtual machines, power them on and off, and remove them in the end, I guess. We can do dynamic changes to them, so we can change the physical and virtual um, CPUs, we can add and remove memory on the fly, we can add and remove adapters, both physical adapters and virtual adapters that go to the VIOS. We can also do our live partition mobility, often called uh, migration, where we can jump our entire operating system and all its resources to a different computer in the computer room. OK, it's demo time. Let's go and use a HMC. This is my Chrome browser. I'm using um, HMC 13 for my demo. Let's hit return. You'll see it complaining up in here. It doesn't like the certificates. Um, we're a bit crash and burn with our HMCs, trying lots of beta versions and things. In your production environment, you'll take your security keys from the HMC and tell your browser that this is a, a friendly machine. Give me a standard thing up here. I'm going to click on here to go in to get the browser up. OK, I'll stop for a second to resize my window so it's uh, on the screen here. And I'll just log in. Well, I hope so. Um, if I know what I was doing last time, then it will just carry on. Or I can explicitly say I want the classic view. OK, I'll stop for a second there and resize it again. It does the whole screen and I'm only capturing on a part of it. So this is the default view and where you get to when you first come in. I think it might push you up a message of the day type thing. Uh, in here we can immediately see what version we're on, on 8.4.0 with a couple of uh, fixes applied to it, which is quite useful. Um, we'll look at this, this menu in a, in a minute. Down here it's saying some of my machines have the warning triangle up against them and some of them actually have um, service events, so I need to go and have a look at those. I can adjust the size of this over here a little bit. Okay, up in here, this is NAG, this is me, so I can remember who I am. And um, in here we have a log off button. I'll just click that and show you something, I won't actually do it. Okay, so if we do a log off and an OK, then it just closes down our session and uh, we're done. We have to start again. If I go to a disconnect, it'll actually uh, freeze my session. And when I come back, it will say, do you want to reconnect? And it will bring it back exactly where it was before I uh, disconnected. This is good if you've got long-standing things running. Okay, I'll actually cancel that for now. In here, there's lots of additional resources in here for lots of information, the README and lots of guides to do things. So you don't have to look too far for your documentation. In here, uh, if you installed it but didn't go through the um, guided setup wizard, then you can do it again in here. If you did it the first time as you um, installed HMC, then um, don't click on this, because this will ask you again all those questions about your um, IP address for your system admin network, uh, the DHCP ranges for your private networks, um, usernames and telephone numbers and addresses and all sorts of things that it will need for um, IBM to call you back if you've got a problem to engage you to uh, get hardware fixed and that sort of thing. I guess the important thing though in here is the systems and that's uh, hidden away under here when you start off with uh, servers so let's click on that. You can see here a list of my servers. Um, these are our names. This by no means a standard. By default you get the machine type and serial number which uh, I tend to get a bit word blind and they all look the same after a while. Okay, and we can see in here, these are all my machines. Uh, we put P8, P6 or P7 on the front, depending on which power process there is in there, the model name, and then we have colors so we can remember our machines in a sort of friendly format. Up in here, you'll see this tree view. Uh, this means I get these little turnbuckles in here. So I click on here, I'll see the virtual machines on this machine. The first one's a VO server, um, just happens to be alphabetically that way. And that the rest of these, um, we call them VMs in a number, the number are actually related to the IP address. It can help us work out what's what. As you can see, this is uh, powered off at the moment. Looking at other things down in here, we have um, updates in here. This lets us put new levels of system firmware on the machine or indeed update the HMC itself. In here, service management are looking for problems arising on the machine. HMC management is about managing the HMC itself and its services. Again, we're going to look at this in more detail. Lots of information about running the machine. System plans will skip by now, and we've seen the servers already. Well, that's it for this time round, and we'll go into these in more detail in later parts. Well, that's enough for part one. In part two, we'll be looking at controlling servers in detail, just all hands-on for the next set of movies. If you liked this movie, please click on the liked button below.